Okay, let's talk about the MEGA, Middle School Math Assessment. So if you're uh, watching this video, assume that you're here because you are studying for uh, this particular test, which is the certification test you need to take to teach middle school math in the great state of Missouri. So um, a little bit about myself before we get going here. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math, a middle school, high school math teacher, even top beyond. But I definitely know what it's like to take a uh, certification exams. They're not easy. You really have to study for them. And just because you're going to be teaching math at the middle school level uh, doesn't need mean that you're just going to be dealing with, you know, maybe pre-algebra and, you know, kind of fractions and all that stuff. You really do need to know a lot. And if you look at the assessment, um, uh, what's on there, type the, you know, the math that you're going to be tested on is, you know, a considerable amount of high school level mathematics. So you really need to be, you know, ready for this exam. You got to study for it. And with that, um, I wanted to let you know that I actually offer a full comprehensive test prep course for the MEGA Middle School Math Assessment. I'm going to leave the link to that course in the description of this video. But what I've got here is a kind of a little pop quiz, if you will, something that you definitely should be able to, one, you'll be definitely be teaching, uh, likely at the middle school level. But so, you know, this is a basic algebra problem. I'm going to tell you what it is here in a second. But if you get this right, you know, Definitely that's not a full indicator that you're completely ready for the assessment. It's just a pop quiz, but if you don't get this right, if you're struggling with it, then that's a real indicator that you've got a lot of work to do for, um, you know, to go in and take this assessment confidently. Okay, so what I'd like you to do is to find the equation of a line. Okay, I want you to find the equation of a line that has a slope of two-thirds and passes through the point two six. Okay, so again, let me repeat the uh, question. So I want you to find the equation of a line, and we'll write that in y equals mx plus b form, okay? So find the equation of a line that has a slope of two-thirds and passes through the point two, six. So if you want to pause the video and give that a whirl, that's fine. I'm going to, of course, uh, go through it, go through this uh, uh, solution here. Okay, so let's get to it. So this is a real easy, basic, standard level algebra one pre-algebra type of problem so if you like know you can do it or you forgot like you know when you see me do it and you're like oh I just forgot listen you can't you can't go into this assessment being like oh I forgot how to do that oh I remember you have to do even if you're good at math or you just took me you have to be like really like up to speed on your mathematics your algebra geometry and everything that's going to be on this assessment so again you know I'm kind of being redundant you got to make sure you have a good study plan Okay, let's get to it. There's a couple different approaches here to um, to solve this problem. You can use uh, the slope. Um, this is actually called the slope-intercept form. Okay, I can use this equation and plug in plug in the m. I have the m, and then here I have what x and I have y. I can plug in that x here and plug in that y there and solve for b, which is my y-intercept, and then kind of reshuffle things. But I, that particular method is not my favorite method. What I like to uh, use is the point slope formula. All stuff that you need to know because you're going to be teaching it as a middle school uh, math teacher. Now again, and I'm sure you know this, but I'm, I'm going to kind of go off on a quick tangent here. At the middle school level, you can definitely, you'll definitely be teaching or can be teaching Algebra 1 if you're selected or even like honors geometry. Okay, so definitely pre-algebra. Almost everyone's getting pre-algebra, but you may be that algebra one teacher or even more advanced. So you know you got to really know your stuff. You know you're, this is high school level courses at the middle school level. Okay, so let's go back to our problem. All right, so I have the m. Okay, so again this is the point slope formula. It's a great formula here. I have the m, and I have the x. Okay, so I'm going to plug in where it says x1. I'm going to plug in the x value there, and then I have my y value, which is 6, and I'll plug that in right there. And then we'll go ahead and clean this up, and we'll have our answer. So it's going to be y minus 6 equals 2 thirds, right? I'm just kind of plugging in x minus 2. Now, before I do anything here, I'm going to just kind of double check and make sure everything is, is good. I'm like, okay, everything is plugged in correctly. y1 is 6. Okay, two thirds is my slope. Okay, my x is two. Okay, excellent. 
So at this point, what you want to do is do the distributor property, okay, right here. Remember, I want to get my line in y equals mx plus b form. So I'm going to do the distributor property. So that's going to be 2 thirds uh, times x. So let me go and write this down here. y minus 6 is equal to 2 thirds times x and then 2 thirds times this negative 2. So we'll just do this over here. 2 thirds times 2 over 1, of course, is going to be 4 thirds, but that's negative 4 thirds, right? Negative 4 thirds right there. All right, almost done. Okay, so what do I have to do now? Well, now I got to go ahead and move this 6 over and I have to add it to this negative 4 thirds. So I'm just going to add 6 to both sides of the equation just like so. And I'm going to have y equals 2 thirds x. And now let me go ahead and do this off to the side. I have 6 plus a negative 4 thirds. All right, so let's do some work here. So that's 6 over 1, so I have the lowest common denominator of 3, so that's going to be 18 over 3 plus a negative 4 thirds. Let me just make sure I'm doing my fractions here correctly. Okay, yes, this is good. All right, 4 thirds, that's what I'm trying to do. See, one of the things that you have to do as a teacher, a math teacher, is you got to be demonstrating how, you know, good math habits. Double checking your work, showing your work, because that's what your students, you know, that's what you're going to want from your students. So it's not about just you know, like, hey, here's the answer. You know, you need to be, you know, have instilled these good um, academic habits. It's, it's crucial in math. Okay, so now I can go ahead and add the, uh, the numerators here. So if I'm doing this all correct, I'm going to get 14 thirds, positive 14 thirds. So let's go write that over here. And no need to turn that into a mixed number. We are good to go. So I, as long as I didn't make any mistakes, which I don't believe I did, this is our answer. So this is the equation of a line that has a slope of two thirds, and we can see that here, okay, because that's the coefficient in front of the x, and passes to the point two six. So again, you could have um, used this formula to get, you know, to reach those same, um, uh, you know, answer, but this is a basic algebra skill, okay. Remember, you're as a math teacher, and you know, I've taught, you know math many 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 years you have to have you just don't have to know the material you have to be a like a master of it you got to be in total command of it like for myself right yeah I've taught algebra one algebra two oh, a lot of different courses but I have a degree in mathematics not math education I actually have a degree in mathematics and a master's degree and even then you still have to really get into the material when you're teaching mathematics um, and you got to connect you know, to your students and teach them in a way that they they understand. Okay, remember, you as a teacher, you're like a translator. Just because you know the material doesn't mean that you're gonna, you know, you you have to find creative ways to teach so your students can get it. Okay, and the, probably the number one way that they're going to learn, just like you know, uh, our children do, if you happen to be a parent, is by seeing, demonstrating, right? So. Hopefully you found this uh, little pop quiz interesting. Let's go ahead and, and wrap this up. So again, um, uh, I'm going to leave a link to my full MEGA uh, middle school math uh, assessment prep course. A really comprehensive course. I think you really like that. Uh, so I'm going to leave the link to that in the description of this video. If you're new to my YouTube channel, I've been on YouTube for over a decade and have hundreds of videos that, that can definitely uh, help you prepare for this um, assessment. Um, you, if you do the work, you're going to pass this thing, okay? But it's a win-win scenario. One, if you do do the work now, not only are you going to pass the assessment, you, you're going to be a better, you know, math teacher, okay? Obviously, you need to know math if you're going to teach it. Hey, if you enjoyed the video, definitely appreciate a thumbs up. And let me know, are you coming from uh, the elementary ranks? Are you new to middle school? Are you maybe planning to uh, maybe one day go to, uh, after you teach middle school math, why middle school? Um, you know, someone who's taught middle school and high school, they're completely different. Uh, there's a big difference for teaching, uh, you know, 12th grade students, AP students that have their driver's license or going to college versus a sixth grader. <laughs> big, big differences. But um, anyways, uh, any feedback would be good feedback. You know, I definitely uh, wish you all the best. Listen, these exams are not easy and they shouldn't be easy because, it, you know, you're going into a profession and we need great teachers, okay? And math is so important. So congratulations on your choice of career. You're definitely gonna make it. 
that I just know. I mean, if you're watching this video, it's up to this point. <laughs> that alone is proof to me that you you, you have the tenacity to uh, get through it. And by the way, too, let me just say this one little thing: that if this is your second time taking this exam, don't don't get stressed about that. Even if worst case happens, you got to retake this exam. That's pretty common. Uh, that a lot of teachers have to take their certification exam more than once. So don't let that stop you as well. The key though is to find a good study program, get immersed in the material, and then, you know, really, you know, get a, a great score. Okay, with that being said, thank you for your time. I wish you all the best and have a great day.